Well, Royal Buffer King Platinum has posted a 38% reduction in full-year headline earnings per share to 104 cents. The company also declared no dividend for the period. And joining us now live from the JSC to unpack the results further is Steve Peary. He's the CEO of Royal Buffer King Platinum. Steve, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. As I say there, headline earnings per share falling back 38% to 104 cents. We've seen a 3% increase in your production as and uh, you know your mold tonnage specifically run us through the year that was because it seems to have been a pretty tough period definitely that was a, a very difficult um, year to operate in i need not repeat all those events that took place but the results are indicative of the difficult uh, operating operating period I, I have to say that um, whereas we we did well by keeping the ounce, i mean the, the tonnages profile uh, quite flat. We suffered a reduction in ounces as a result of a reduction in grade. And, and it's, it's, it's mainly on the back of number one, you know, uh, reef tonnages that, that, that we melt, but also some of the tons that were lying outside on a pad for a long time, very low grade. But also because of operational flexibility that we have been looking at, we mine more UG2 in order to make up for the lost tons. And, and because the Marensky, the Marensky panels were still under development. So the Marensky tunnels, pa panels were there, but uh, they're still under development, and therefore it was mainly, mainly reef tons. You mentioned operational flexibility. Take us through that and just how, uh, how or where you're looking to be more flexible. I mean, uh, we've seen you reduce your operating labor by 8% over the previous uh, year, and that in yeah. line with your business optimization strategy as a whole. Uh, so take us yeah. through uh, the, the strategy in more detail. If you remember well, in 2010, when in a run-up to, the, to, the, to our IPO, we said our strategy is based on the following to improve operational uh, excellence, to achieve operational excellence, and, and, and secondly, to grow organically and also to grow through uh, synergies and, and, and as well as uh, uh, through acquisitions. And on operational excellence, in the main was to create that operational flexibility, small panels, 1.5 panels for every operating crew. And as a result, we, we, we put a lot of effort and money capital on development in order to open more panels, more reserves for our crews to create that flexibility. We have achieved that. The past two years, we have been battling on it. And our phase two of development you know, was, was quite successful on, on schedule. And there's a saving of 110 million rands. And, and, and the other aspect, and that will help us on volumes. And the other aspect then will be on cost. And we have been looking at overall cost. And normally when you talk about cost, people rush to think about you talking only about workers. Mm -hmm. It's not about workers only. It's, it's, it's a holistic approach to what cost and looking at all the cost centers. It's not business as usual. We're looking at each, every exp expenditure pattern. Who spends the money? On what does he spend the money? Is it an efficient way of spending that money? Across the board, from procurement to everything, a cup of tea that you're using, is, do, do you need that cup of tea? Do you need that breakfast? Do you need that? Everything that you're doing, and I think all mining companies would be doing exactly that. The business is no longer as usual as it used to be. It's not hard to understand, Steve, why, though, shift focus uh, immediately to uh, the labor front when we are looking at costs with operating uh, co or costs in terms of your labor side of things, making up, what, 62 percent of, uh, of your cost base. So let's take a look yeah. at your labor management and the kind of strategy you're employing there, because you've got a policy of open engagement. How are you managing? Managing yeah. labor right now. I think it's 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 about it's not about managing labor. It's about uh, people people's conduct. How do we how are we conducting ourselves as people? And I'm talking about collectively management communities as well as the workers themselves. Our strategy, our approach uh, is that we are partners in this business and we share strategies, we share business plan, we make workers understand where the business is standing right uh, you know, at any particular moment so that we don't wait for a business to do badly and then you go to them and say this business is not making money. They, they, they would know as that when we're operating and the business is not performing quite well, they know all the time and they're monitoring it all the time. But you're right, 62% uh, of our cost for, 20, 
for 2012 was, was, was labor. But remember, we started labor, operating labor, at uh, 6.5 or so, 6,500 6, people. Today we're talking about slightly above 6,000, right? 6,057 6, people. And we did not retrench people, but what we did that we did not repl replace people. For, we have got an advantage of having permanent labor as well as contractors. And contractor, it's, 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 you, you manage it by contract. When that contract expires, you don't renew it and then the contractor takes his mm -hmm. employees to another operation somewhere else. So we are able to play around and optimize our labor accordingly in that regard. That's how we succeeded. It is not the end, it was the beginning. We continuously are looking at it. But you say, how are we managing our labor? Our, our relationship with our workers is on one-on-one -on -one basis, directly chief executive speaking to the lowest of all the employees, not using uh, the unions. But we have got the unions that have shown leadership consistently all through the years, particularly last year in difficult times. We had very strong unions that had a very good relationship with our members. There's a focus uh, by South African business at large, Steve, on productivity. And you've got an incentive yeah. scheme to actually promote productivity yeah. in the longer term. Take us through that scheme that you're employing. Well, we, we pay people bonuses for uh, we pay people bonuses for the, the square meters that they cover, then it's on escalating scale, starting at a lower one, which is on target, and exceeding target and exceeding the target more. And, but we also emphasize on, uh, we also emphasize safety because there's a penalty for operating in an unsafe manner. So if you operate in an unsafe manner, you breach the rules, you injure somebody, uh, that bonus is not payable. So, and, and that has been agreed to with us. And we, and we, we have seen uh, a, a, big, a big improvement in that productivity, in, in efficiency of crews as, uh, improving quite, quite well. It's not yet there, but we can see improvements already. And we continue telling them, listen here guys, this is not only about productivity, it's all about yeah. safe quality ounces. So safe quality ounces all the time. So we're looking at safety, yeah. we're looking at productivity, reining in yeah. costs. We've got to look at capital expenditure as well, Steve, and what this says uh, about yeah. uh, your investments moving forward. CapEx increases held to 2.4%, so you're displaying quite a bit of restraint on that end too. Yeah, we, we, we are, we are. Remember last year we also cut back on certain CapEx that is not immediately needed for, for productivity and sustainability, although long term we may need it, but this is something that we could do without. But we did accelerate, that capital, accelerate capital expenditure on phase two and phase three, which are development, which is development CapEx in order to improve our IMS, and we, are, we have succeeded in that. We have accelerated CapEx on, on stale draft, which is our flagship, quality mine. We need it when the cycle is down so that when the cycle picks up we are ramping up or we have ramped up so that we can catch up with the cycle. So it's, it's a very well coordinated and monitored situation. We're keeping our powder dry but we, we, we're not sulking back to say we're not spending because the world is bad.